Welcome to the Westside Barbell Podcast. The Westside Barbell Podcast brought to you by the Conjugate Club. This is a members-only subscription where you can uh, learn how um, they train at Westside Barbell and also get exclusive videos of Louis talking on training. Today's topic, there is, um, we actually have a guest visitor. We got Pete Bremner over. Uh, Pete's a strong man and a class act in the deadlift. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Louis and Pete. Luke? Hi, Pete. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Mom. How are you? Pete, I, I don't know. Looking at you, it's hard to tell because you're from Ireland. I, I know people from Ireland are pretty messed up. How old are you? 32. 32? Yeah. Okay. Um, and what part of Ireland from you from, are you from? Uh, I'm from the north of Ireland, so near Belfast. Belfast? Yeah. So, okay, I've heard of that. <laughs> um, so what, what do you primarily do? Is it strongman, right? Yeah, I started out in bodybuilding and then moved on to strongman, and now I'm kind of going strongman powerlifting. Mm-hmm. What do you specialize in? Deadlifting. Deadlift. Yeah. And in a strongman contest of straps, what's your best? Uh, 946 pounds. 946 four, pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, I know you're a strong dude to train in here. Um, over there, uh, <clears throat> well, who did you train with? Strongman, who was it like, who would be your common training partners? Uh, I don't have a lot of training partners back in Ireland, but the guy that coached me, Sam Graham, he came to... West Side many years ago as well with Jerry McNamara. So I have a good coach, but not a lot of training partners. Okay. All right. How, how do you like Strongman? Yeah, I enjoy Strongman. I just enjoy being strong in general. So yeah. anything that challenges you to try to lift something heavier than you people think possible, I, I right. like doing it. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> what about your training over there before you came to West Side? What primarily did you do? Uh Training over there, well, I've been here earlier in the year, and then when I went back, I tried to implement the stuff that we done here and by myself, but it's a lot harder to do this kind of training and push yourself as hard as we do down in the gym. So you started doing so, some good mornings and yeah. things? Yeah, things I needed to did. bring up my hamstrings and glutes. So yeah. Started doing good mornings, uh, more reverse hypers and slowing them down the way you told me. Yeah. Uh, and just a lot more core work. I know. Like I said, as strong as you are and you're strong – your hamstrings, you bring those hamstrings and that lower glued up, it'd be, it's crazy what you would lift. Yeah. You're lifting enough right now. Um, so um, how long have you been lifting? Uh, for over 10 years. Over 10 years? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know you're right here at Westside. We'd really love to have it here. Um, how long you, How long are you here for this time, this visit? Uh, I'm here for three months this time. So I just go over and get stuck straight in and then done my first meet. Obviously, we used guys last Saturday. So. Yeah. How'd you like that? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, For the pull only, I'm obviously looking forward to trying a full power meet at some stage because I'm in the right place to train for it and the right place to do it. Tell us about the meet. Tell us about your meet experience. I I was there. I saw it. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Well, the first part of the meet, I was obviously had to wait to squat and bench was over and uh, and started getting warmed up and my warm-ups were brilliant. I felt very confident in myself that day. The difference with powerlifting and strongman is obviously... I can't wear straps, so I just tested my grip a bit more, and uh, my opening pull was 850, which was easy, and then I tried to pull 905 and get on the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just had to beat over 900, and then in the 905, it came up very fast. That was easier than the 850, I think, even to look at, and then just <laughs> left me with this. Yeah, <laughs> nice, three, three nice almost yeah, a knockout. Nice bicep at the top, but... You know, I tell my guys don't use straps uh, because you know when you turn that hand over, you're not used to getting that hand turned over. Puts a lot of pressure on you inside your bicep, basically right about yeah. right where you tore it. Yeah, so that's that fully open when it's yeah. turned like that. You didn't you didn't have any trouble with the grip though. No, no, my grip's good. Yeah, so. your grip's good. <laughs> strong, strong. Yeah, yeah. And weak things break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have to get you one of them shirts. Yeah. Lou, <laughs> what would you do uh, if? Say coming back, you know a good few people, including yourself, have torn off biceps. But oh. what do you think the best way is to recover? Like, what should Pete do now, leading up to uh, hopefully his next event to get that back? I in talked action? to Pete about this back in 1979 to seniors. I tore my bicep off a 672 opener. It's called Meltdown in Mississippi. It was real human. Everybody dropped the bars. I locked the damn thing out, and he gave me the down seat and tore my bicep all totally off. Yeah. So I went back. Two surgeons said operate. You know, right off. Yeah. And one said, if he didn't hear what it looked like, don't. So I said, how I ain't getting operated on? But by that, the next Monday, I was in a power rack. And I, where I could barely pick the weight up. I worked up to 7.05. And, he, and then each, each week, I, I would drop it down an inch. 
And in six months, I pulled 705 in a meet and made the third highest total ever made. Now, back then, there was no shirts. I'd bench 462. And in that meet, six months, I made 480, weighing 212 was my first top 10 bench. But I also recall uh, Black Shofro come down. It was a famous gym, you know, back then. I mean, they were strong as, you know, strong as our gym, for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Steve Wilson and Hoss the Boss and Black come down. I said, hey, man, why you, you know, it's my house. I trained in my garage. I said, come on, I want to I want to see if I can bench. Because yeah. my arm was all black and blue and was torn off. Yeah. I went out and I, I raw bench 485. This is two weeks after tearing it off. So I had confidence that I was going to yeah. make full recovery. But that's what I did. I started a high pin, and each week I took it down a little bit, just, you know, partial all the way down. But you get used to it. I had no trouble ever. We yeah. won the deadlift way more years later. Never had trouble. And did you keep the same, same grip? grip as well? Yeah. I've seen my buddy Steve Wilson's got huge arms. He switched grips, tore both biceps off eventually. Yeah. Uh, Brett Tracy, another jacked-up little dude. Um, he uh, he switched. I've seen guys switch and end up tearing near the bicycle. Yeah. So I never switched. Yeah, just keep that as the underhand. Yes, yeah. kept that way. Mm-hmm. If you're strong enough, could you move the double overhand? Or not many people pulled double overhand back then. I mean, looking back, I wish I'd have pulled double overhand. I started out Olympic weightlifting, yeah. but I never thought about pulling. You know, everybody deadlifted. They used the reverse grips. So I just. Yeah. Mainly went to reverse grip. I remember that's what uh, Chris Spiegel, right? He, he right. Double, oh, double overhand. Yeah, the, our guy, he was a 6'10 and uh, 420. He tore his off, come back, hook, hook gripped, yeah. pulled 915. He would have pulled, he would have probably pulled 970 a minimum. Yeah. But he but he, he he got married, thought he's too big, and he, and he quit. <laughs> <laughs> Same old stupid story, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Responsibility range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but that's what I would do, just, you know, start back. Yeah. That way you build your confidence up anyhow. Yeah. Um, in our gym, what, what has helped you the most, do you think? Uh, probably having the, the guys that are driven enough to train hard. Ah. And, uh, training partners. Training partners and having you in the background, because mm-hmm. if we aren't training hard enough, yeah. we'll get told. I always say to people, you, first you need a power rack so you won't die, and then you need a, a, a training partner. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a big difference, train with, especially for my squatting. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. like deadlifting and stuff, I can do a lot of weight by <laughs> myself, but squatting, it's, especially for like eight sets of threes or five by five, mm-hmm. it's you know it's hard to get motivated to do that by yourself with yeah. such heavy weight. So you, you could squat a ton if you tried. Yeah. Take your stance yeah. out and take your time. Six months, you squat a grand. Yeah. In, in, in your sleep. Yeah. Your hips and lower back are so strong. It's, it's incredible how strong they are. Yeah. So... so. Oh, well, I'll be here for a while. We'll, we'll, get, yeah. we'll get working on my squat and my arms. I ask. Mm. Yeah, uh, what really helped our guys in the deadlift, they did a lot of uh, standing leg curl, yeah. or the hamstring behind the knee. And then, of course, uh, you know, beside, uh, the, the inverse curl, glued ham raises, the real heavy 135 pound cheaters. Yeah. Um, and then heavy reverse hypers. The hamstring, it ties into your glute, does seven times the work it does where it ties into the knee. Yeah. So that's where you're kind of flat. Yeah, you, put, you build that up, the sky's the limit, and also your abductors. Yeah. Yeah. So, so should I pull sumo sometimes as well? Yes, that's what yeah. I would do. Yeah, I, I mean, some of my best deadlifts, I had a girl, Mariah Leggett, pulled all sumo in training, and a two-hour win, pulled 484, and 132 is conventional. It just saved her, it just saved her back, really, you yeah. know, because back then we did a lot of work, a lot of work. Men, and women do the same work that the men do here. You, yeah. And so there's no difference. Yeah. You know, you saw them the other day. They did it over over an hour, two different data programs. Yeah. I tell my guys in there, like, we're talking to Willie the other day. I said, what do you got to do, two workouts? You killed him. You're up in the ball. I said, that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Matt Dillon used to call me on the way home. He'd, you know, he'd get home, and Bertie got home and called me up and cussed me out because his back's so bumped. You know, that's where you, you got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? So what is your goals? Uh, more, both powerlifting and strongman? Uh, strongman, I would love to try and, like, Beat Eddie Hall's record of 500 kilo. I'd love to try and pull 505. Yeah. Only because if there's somebody at the top, I might as well aim to be above it. Uh, and then, kind of for par lifting, uh, I haven't done a full par meet yet. So first of all, would be to try and get that out of the road, and then build a good total. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could put up a big toe if you could halfway learn a bench shirt. Yeah. You know what I'd like to see in powerlifting, even though I mean I've always gone with with uh, technology. Guys got shirts. You know, I mean, my first shirt, you got maybe 10 pounds. Then I didn't come out, maybe got 25 pounds. Yeah. You know, now shirts, you get 350 pounds. But I, I, I would like to see, everybody talks about raw and they talk about gear. I'd like to see the bench shirt taken out. Yeah. 
And then wear a squat suit, squat dead, and yeah. go bench shirt. I think I would really change the reflection of powerlifting in America. Yeah. They say he's good at what? Yeah, well, that way, you know, you, you're going to have to have some real upper body strength. Yeah. I used to have 15 people could roll bench over six. Now I have nobody. And, you know, I'm a little discouraged by that. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, if you watch one of my training tapes, George Howard touch and go 625, went 230. Kenny Powers is 640. You know, he was uh, 22 years old and uh, weighed 270. 640. Yeah. Mike Wolf, 650. J.M. Blakely did triples of 585 like there's nothing on the bar. And uh, Paul Key, 625. J.L. Hook was 625. It, it, goes, it goes on and on and on. I mean, it's just Mike Wolf. I think I said 650 recently Nick to me. Nick Who? Winter. Nick Winter, 700 for a double. Do you think them guys were stronger because the equipment wasn't as good? They used more, they did big workouts. Yeah. Like after well. they bench, they did inclines or seat, you know. Uh, all you guys out there, I mean, uh, we're talking to Pete about Stoneman, but if you're a bench presser, a third of the training should be bench, a third seat of press, and a third inclines. You divide that up. If you go back and look at the old timers, you could bench big. That's what they did. And that's what we did. That's what Kenny and all of our guys did. Lots of incline, a lot of seated, and a lot yeah. of bench. And a ton of triceps, yeah. upper back. You said uh, Nick Winters. The um, the first time he tried to deadlift, it was something astronomically oh. high. Yeah, he wanted to deadlift. So I said, okay. I said, just use straps. I didn't want to see him yeah. hurt himself, you know what I mean? For no reason. He pulled 755 the first time he ever did it. Stiff, stiff like deadlift. <laughs> and then he went on to pull 855. Yeah. So he was strong all over, you know. He yeah. was 300. He's, he's kind of compact like you, but he was he's bigger. He's 350 yeah. pounds of freaking muscle. Yeah. And uh, he was strong. He was strong. I've always said, if you're strong in one thing, you'd be strong in anything. You just a lot of guys are lazy. Yeah, they don't want to be tr- you know. So, you know, deadlift's a tough one too. Yeah, you, know, you can't half miss it. You can't <laughs> lower and miss it like yeah. a squat or a bench. It's just laying there staring at your ass. Yeah, that's I. I've always thought that's in my gym. If I was a major, the strongest person that ever lived in my gym, down to the weakest, I would measure the deadlift. I think it's a different mentality, though, because some people can give up on a deadlift easy because yeah. if it's hard, they let go. Um, yeah, years but ago. In a squat, you still have to stand up with it, so you don't <laughs> want to stop pushing. Well, a lot of people are afraid of it. Yeah. But uh, a lot of years ago, all the, all the crazy people, the weirdos, you know, were deadlifters. Yeah. And they were crying <laughs> in the corner, sheets over their head, inside lockers. I, you name it. Um, I, I'll tell a little story about a guy called Spack the Black. He knocked me out of third place in the Nationals in 1971. He comes out out of nowhere, pulls six six seventy deadlift, you know, uh, and one eighty six fifty deadlift, one eighty one, and knocked me out a second. I had yeah. it all wrapped up. I thought, <laughs> but he was down in it was a CPA, but he was in uh, Miami, Miami, Florida, and he, he he goes in the gym and he loads up his weights and he goes outside in the street and he's out there about twenty minutes and he, he screams and screams and runs and but he picks it up, loads up more weight, goes back out in the street. He done this three or four times, and the gym owner's telling the story. He goes so. You know, he load up the weight. He goes back outside. He don't come in. You know, he don't come back in. It's like yeah. twenty minutes. So we went outside. and He's sitting in a police cruiser. Cops picked him up for screaming, running <laughs> in the street. And they called him Spack the Whack. Yeah. No disrespect. He was freaking crazy. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to do something too in Nebraska. He bombed out of me in his squad. But I go downstairs and he had uh, four hundred five on one bar, five four uh, four ninety five and five eighty five. He picked up to five eighty five, run over, picked up to four ninety five, then the four hundred five. He working on contrast training back in 1977. You know, I, I found that amazing, you know, honestly. I've seen a lot of stuff and yeah. been a lot of places, seen a lot of people. Um, well, it, it, so what's your plans? You going to get over here for good? Well, I'd like to be over here training for a lot longer. It's yeah. Three months at a time. So mm-hmm. the next move is trying to look at a visa and see if I can get over to stay more long term. Yeah, well, if anything we can do, Tom will get you over here. Yeah. Yeah. I get my name on that board. Yeah, a few times. <laughs> I need you know everybody needs strong guys. It's yeah. funny you're you're a big guy. Did look a little Jeremy, a little guy just squatted uh, six seventy, went one hundred twenty one pounds, world record. Yeah, you know you never know. <laughs> you never know. Strongest, big ain't strong. Strongest strong. Yeah, and you're not that damn big. You're only what three hundred five pounds. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy done real good at that, me. Sure did. So did Wes. Yeah, Wes did yeah. real well. Yeah, consider, yeah, considering. Yeah. He comes out of the hospital and goes, <laughs> and he goes back to the hospital. Yeah. No, that's dedication. Tommy, guy questions? Yeah. Hey, Pete, what was, the, um, what was the biggest difference that you noticed in training here uh, compared to thinking of training here? So before you came, 
what was your initial uh, thought process on Westside? Then you actually started training. What was the biggest difference for you? When I came at the start, I didn't have any expectation of myself. So I just came and hoped that I was able to hang with somebody and was good enough to be <laughs> here. And then when I came back again, I was more nervous coming back the second time because obviously I'd done well the first time and then I had expectations of myself to do better. So but I know when I'm here that I've improved even in the short time I am here just by using some different equipment like the ATP and stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So again, working on my glutes and my hamstrings and stuff. So yeah, And your, your uh, stand-up press went up, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And working against bands. Working against bands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it works. I mean, it, yeah, all this stuff works for everything. It really does. Yeah. Oh, all my, I think I pulled that 905 at the meet probably as well as I've ever pulled with straps oh. on and as fast. Yeah, so. you were, that thing was flying up. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. Man, I was, you know, because yeah. Jake was there. Yeah. The kid, it holds yeah. the record. Yeah. He's got a lot. To believe it or not, he could probably pull 950, 970 yeah. if it get him back and get his body weight back up. Yeah. He wants to box, uh, kickbox. Play rugby, rugby uh, you name it, you yeah. know. And he's, yeah, he's about an going to be an engineer. And yeah. Some people got too much talent, too many things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just try and stuck with the one. Yeah. So, see if, if you focus on too many things, then you don't do as good as you should at the one that you obviously want to. Yeah, you want to be good. Don't be half ass. Just yeah. do one thing. I, I remember a guy he had coon dogs, right? And he, he sent out this freak. He bought, paid a ton of money for his coon dog. And it would go out and chase deer all night long. And he'd catch up with it, you know, and he'd, he they said he'd smack it and everything. Next time, do the same damn thing. So he got a billy goat, and he put deer sin on it and tied the billy goat to the dog. <laughs> yeah, and they tied him up all night like that. And he said that dog never chased a deer ever again. <laughs> he went back to chasing yeah. raccoons like he's supposed to. Yeah. I'm not into chasing anything. Yeah. Well, an extreme lesson. Yeah. <laughs> tied goat to me. Yeah. Well, well, Tom, you got more. Pete, yeah, you got that? How did you, um, so when you first came here, how did you find the volume? And secondly, uh, did you expect to see the weakness in your hamstrings that was uh, pointed out to you before you came? Uh, well, the first time I was here, I was lucky enough, I started on a deadlift day, so I kind of oh. hung with everybody. And then when it came to Friday, I remember uh, lying outside on the floor <laughs> and being sick and then crawling back into the gym. So my... GPP definitely wasn't there. Yeah, uh, I wasn't used to that volume of training and the intensity of it because when one person came out of the rack, it was the next person was straight in. It wasn't like you just get to it. Uh, the hamstring thing, I thought my hamstrings would have been stronger, obviously, because I pull a lot. Uh, and Sammy had never really told me. We just sort of done a deadlift movement and then stiff leg deadlifts or reverse hypers. But other than that, I hadn't done much more work for my hamstrings. So now I do like a lot of band curves and stuff in the ATP. And I can see your hamstrings are stronger than that meat because you're really rolling that bar back. Yeah. You know, it was flying back yeah. the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Well, since I've got here, I do hamstrings every every time we go down training, uh, now, even if it's just with a band and yep. whatever. I always just do hamstrings and glutes and abs. As long as you switch around, you can do it every day, can't you? Yeah. Yep. So, when they obviously showed that they were stronger, my hamstrings and glutes for that meat because... My pull was perfect. Yeah, a lot of people, for some reason, I had the impression that we don't do any volume. Yeah, I know you've heard this right, Tom. I've had guys total 2,500 in the 220s and couldn't get through the squat workout with them guys. Yeah. You know, a thousand, over a 1,000 pound squat. They yeah. could not get through the squat, let alone the deadlift. They I, didn't make it to the bathroom. I mean, they were like yeah. halfway between the monolith and the bathroom laying on the ground. Yeah. I remember the kid Tommy me towards Patel, if I don't remember his name, down from Florida. Oh, uh, Junior. Uh, from Georgia? No, oh, he's oh, uh, I was going to say Danny Trejo, but uh, Danny. I think, yeah, it was something like that, yeah. yeah. Torillo or something, yeah. yeah. I just one strong guy. Couldn't he get through the squat workout? Yeah. I think a lot of stuff that I read online about Westside, obviously I thought like Friday was going to be an easy day. Oh. Because it was like dynamic <laughs> effort lower. And I'm like thinking that was going to be easy. I, <laughs> I took a 242. He was stuck at 840 for a year. I put him on a program 14 weeks ago, 890 in the 242s. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna have you do. That's what the the girls do. Yeah. It's um. You know, they raise the weight each week. They stand on a four inch box and pull conventional. Yeah. Then the next four weeks, they stand on a four inch box and pull sumo. Now yeah. you know you you readjust yeah. your weights for five sets of five. Yeah. It's the same. You know, each week you raise the weight for three weeks, and you go from that conventional to sumo. 
And then, like I said, we use, if you could grab it, we use a five inch cambered bench press bar, stand on a 10 inch box. Yeah. So the camber's on top of your feet, but your hands yes. are four inches lower than the ground. Yeah. That is as an unbelievable. And then that's what he did. And um, about when he pulled the 890, his last work, I watched him pull sumo on four inch box, five sets of five was 650. His last work. I His last work out before he yeah. pulled the eight eight ninety, and uh, that's be right up your alley. You like to do a lot of deads. It's a lot of deads. Twenty five yeah. deads. You know, each yeah. week. Yeah. You run that up for about three cycles, about you know nine weeks. Yeah, I guarantee you pull. <laughs> you will pull a ton. Yeah, because you can pull. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's too many guys even in powerlifting. It's like beat Andy Bolton's pulling on a thousand pounds. I seen somebody ask Andy Bolton, did he think anybody was close to pulling like a thousand? And he was like, he didn't. Think so at present, like so. yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll be well, there's only two it guys done it, right? Yeah, yeah. You can do it. So. There's no doubt. Like I said, big, big. Uh, Chris was here. I think he could have pulled. You know, I yeah. mean, I thought he's ready to pull. He pulled nine fifty. He pulled nine fifteen on pin three and smoked nine fifteen. I mean, yeah. he pulled nine seventy on pin three. When got married and never came back. Yeah, and he smoked that. Yeah. A lot of good mornings and uh, just a you know a lot of what you're doing. Same thing yeah. what you're doing. He's six. He's like oh, right at six foot ten. He can barely fit in our power rack. Yeah. So. Do you think bands play a big part in getting a big deadlift? Like just say doing a lot of bands uh, from the rack. You asking me? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I told I had Chuck Vogel pull do it one time, and I I would have guys do something. I I got my opinion, but then we do a cycle. Then I'd say, hey, what Pete, what do you think, Pete? Yeah. And I said, Chuck, uh, what did those bands teach you to do? And Chuck's pretty methodical in his thinking, and he's, he thought for a while, and he said, it taught me to think while I'm straining. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys, it gets hard. They lose their mind. Yeah, well, like They those. just forget what they're doing. They can't make the lip. Yeah. Yeah, he used a t- we used a ton of bands. I think we pulled from, not that cycle that I've been on, but the last time I was here, I remember pulling against purple bands from 10-2. hmm yeah. Yeah. What did you pull, like sevens on uh, I can't remember off the top oh. of my head. I have the video of it, but yeah. so, but I pulled a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot so, of it. Yeah, but I think using bands as well helps you to so learn to be fast as yeah. well. You try but, to outrun that band. Yeah, people so. don't understand bands. I, I, they don't understand science. Uh, they need to look at practice. I uh, need to look at super training and uh, look up accommodating resistance, or even yeah. practice science of strength training. Explains it pretty well. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, because you can't go against bands and pull slow. No. Like you, <laughs> I was pulling you back down real fast. Fred Hatfield said years ago, no one can lift a heavyweight slow. Yeah. <laughs> you try to lift this. I've asked, you know, I could ask you the same question. You probably know, but I, I've asked all the big, including Andy Bolton. Yeah. I said, Here's what I said, uh, too. Um, well, I asked him two things. I said, How, what do you think of when you deadlift? They said, do it, do it fast. Yeah. And also I asked Andy when he used gear. I said, Andy, when you got close to me and you put on some gear, when you come back after the meet and you're back in no gear, were you stronger or weaker? And Andy said he was always stronger. Yeah. You know, when you go back without gear, you're stronger by using some gear sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, because it was, Andy told me as well not to use gear a lot of times through training and then just incorporate it coming close to the meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I already know what gear feels like and I already know how to use it. So it's not like I need to practice using it. I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and get stronger without it. Yeah, in my opinion, I was. it didn't matter if I wore gear, it, like breeze or anything conventional. If I was conventional, it didn't matter. Sumo made yeah. a big difference on me because, you know, but not conventional made zero difference. It didn't make any. Yeah. They say you get the least out of a deadlift suit, isn't it? So What's it? Hmm? They say you get the least carryover from a deadlift suit. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, well, you do. Yeah. Sumo, you'll get a big jump, but... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Pete, how strong uh, were you in reverse hypers, and what does your volume look in that? Uh, I remember the first time I'd done them, I think I'd done like girl weights on them. You, <laughs> Lou, you couldn't believe that we'd done them so light and for like more volume. <laughs> I think I'd done like three sets of 15 with, I don't know, 200 or 300 pounds. <laughs> and then the first time I was here, I went into the pet, the one with the chain on it, mm-hmm. the 4 4. four yep. So, uh, but now I do. I can do that or can do heavier than that for the same amount of volume that I used to do. But now I make sure that I have more emphasis on my glutes and squeeze my feet together, mm-hmm. try and hold it at the top and then lower it down slowly. Yeah. So try and feel it all. That, right. that alone will, could put 100 yeah. pounds on a person's deadlift. Yeah, because when I've done them before, I just swung, sort of, yeah, yeah. swung back and forth. So. Um, what do you think are, are your biggest high-yield exercises you do here for accessories and 
what's your favorite variation of max effort do you think that you've never done before uh, well i don't know i've never i didn't always pull against bands in the pens until i was here so i liked doing that i like doing anything that's like dead left and anyhow so it doesn't matter what position you put me mm-hmm. uh the <coughs> accessories i found most beneficial for me was always doing my hamstrings obviously because it's weak and my core and coming up to this meet i really focused on hamstrings and core work as well and it seemed to pay off because i have a video from when i was here at the very start on my first dead left here and then my dead left at the meet and my dead left at the meet was better than the first one i pulled when i was here heavy so mm-hmm. uh, obviously the extra accessory work really pays off what did you do for your stomach uh for core mm-hmm. uh plank and then with bands doing like abs with the bands you know your side uh, bands yeah yeah leg raises mm-hmm. as well just yep. anything at the end of the workout i always put on stuff at the end of the workout usually we're holding the bands your side bends leg raises plank usually the planks because my lower back so pumped as well yeah well when you squat or deadlift your body doesn't move i mean you yeah. you've got to be your torso has got to be really strong yeah i mean i watch everything in the gym I, yeah. I don't, there's nothing i don't see in the gym yeah so. yeah and Dude. you got good mobility Oh, not bad. <laughs> you know, I mean, you 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 yeah. get set to deadlift correctly. Your shoulders aren't mile over the bar or anything. Yeah. So I just need to work on my squat a bit more. Oh yeah. And stuff, but that'll come. Easy. Start yeah. it easy. Take your feet out, and you'll get you man. Three weeks, you will not believe it. Three yeah. weeks makes you different. Yeah. Especially because when we squat at box, because my form isn't great, I know that. Sammy's told me that sometimes I go fast in the last few inches down mm-hmm. to the box. Yeah. So I'm strong enough to stand back up off it, but the whole point is to obviously lower down onto it slowly and get back up off it. One of the things that made our deadlifts the biggest was the super low box squat. No gear, close to yeah. kind of what you do. No no, no belt, no nothing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, old safety squat bar yeah. or just any bar, but I like the old safety squat bar about ruining my neck, but it, yeah. it made us real strong. Yeah. So. Lou, do you think that um, having Pete coming from a straw man background that all the different events give him a different level of GPP than a, a power lifter and it's carrying over. That's why he's having huge success so fast in some of the lifts. I think in the, yeah, after you're here for a little bit, I think, yeah, yeah. I think, I, yeah, I mean, they got to be in shape. And, uh, you know, yeah, I think it might took you a little bit, but then I think it's now it's paying off. Because yeah. the strong man into the power lifting. I think the first time I was here not having training partners, I figured out that I wasn't that fat or... <laughs> You know, I needed to get better because, like, guys like Burley and them, were, oh, yeah. they, they were smoking me, and I was, like, outside being And a big guy. Yeah. 380, 90 pounds, yeah. yeah. But Jay Feet, same way. Yeah, but they're both fat. So yeah. I learned that, and then when I went home, it was sort of, I knew that I needed to train with more intensity if I wanted to be better. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to half-ass your workouts, you need to work it up because you can go to last here if you don't. Pete, how long did it take for you to kind of get your GPP up? Was it? About two or three weeks, or how long did it take you to get into the swing of things? Well, I, obviously, by the time I left the first time, it, it was better. But since I've got home and came back again, it's and it's just a thing that I work on daily, I guess. So do it all the time. But I would say a couple of months, and then I was feeling a lot better. Mm-hmm. So that helps also with getting fatter to with putting on weight because I also seem to put on weight the first time I was here. Oh yeah, and then this time I haven't really been trying as hard to put on weight because I wanted to stay in that 308 class for mm-hmm. the day yeah. left. So, but well, I could make super heavy so if I <laughs> ate some more ice cream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. That's, that's all I got here. Okay, well, Pete, thanks a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you're here and I hope you, you know, make it where you can come here longer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so do I. Yeah, <laughs> put us a big, get us a thousand pound deadlift. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. I'm confident enough in my deadlift now. So yeah. I just need to keep progressing on other things mm-hmm. and hopefully get a good squad. That's the key. Yeah. Progress. Yeah. Everybody wants it all at once. As long as you make progress, it'll all come. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to learn to be patient. Mm-hmm. Progress and patience. So yeah. I'll be fine. Yeah. I'm in the right place to do well. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, man, Pete, thanks a lot. No bother. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll be back here doing another one. You set another record. <laughs> yes. You well. know, by the way, I think you were 30th person over 800 in a deadlift. Yeah. So all you gym owners out there, you know, we could pull. Don't think we can't pull. Four guys over 900. Yeah. So we could pull. All right. Well, thank you very much. No bother. Thank you.